almost ready. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about how we define enough. Because in this work that I talk about, I talk a lot about how dismantling our systems of injustice and, and even the systems of self-hate and this self-improvement path that we never get off of and figuring out how to find lives that actually work for us and that feel good for us and that can be, you know, good for the planet and good for the people on the planet and good for the earth and all of these things is by finding our enough. And I speak out a lot against hustle culture and, and the grind culture and working super hard and the idea that our realities are completely created by our own actions and our own thoughts and everything that we experience on this planet is because of us and, and how learning to develop um, a self-esteem where we're not so dependent upon external validation for letting us know when we're on the right path, when we're living our right life, when we're doing what is actually good for us. By developing this self-love and developing this self-awareness and developing our tools of enoughness from within, we can check out of this system of manufactured insecurity that keeps us constantly looking outside of ourselves for answers, constantly pushing ourselves past what's actually good for us, and keeps us disconnected from our capacity to feel when we are going past what is actually correct. And as in what is actually pragmatically beneficial for us as a living species, <laughs> right? Like that we are just like every other aspect of nature. We want to survive. We survive by getting our needs met. And the way that we understand whether we're getting our needs met or not is through pain and pleasure. And also, of course, right, we were raised in a codependent beginnings where we could not su survive on our own. We could not provide for ourselves. We could not figure out things for ourselves. And thus, we were fully dependent on our caregivers. And because we are emotional beings, our caregivers love and their acceptance and their approval felt to us like we were going to get our needs met, we were going to get provision, that safety, that, that message, that being approved of was drilled into us very, 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 be from the very, very beginning, that being approved of equals survival and that being rejected by these people who held the keys to everything, because again, remember this, in our early childhood, we could not tell that our parents were not God. We could not tell that our parents were not the ultimate authority on absolutely everything. We believed and we saw them as having the keys to our pleasure and having the keys to our being rescued from our pain. So anytime they pulled away, anytime they loved us, we registered that in as, okay, that this is behavior never to do or this is behavior always to do because it makes caregiver who holds everything give me what I need. And if we were in pain and they weren't rescuing us, if we were in pleasure and they were shaming us or guilting us or pulling away from us, we could not then register, well, maybe they, they can't save us. Maybe they're, the way that I'm in pain, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to deal with it. And there is an answer somewhere else, but my, my parents don't have it. And if they were shaming us or guilting us, right, like we couldn't say, well, that could be their bias. <laughs> that could just be something they're going through this day. It might not even have anything to do with me today. It may literally have nothing to do with me or my behavior or who or what I am. It's their bias. It's their filter. It's their whatever they're going through today. We didn't have the capacity to figure that out. We didn't have the capacity to see that. All we saw was I am completely dependent on them for everything. They're withholding from me. They are withdrawing from me. They could be giving me everything. They aren't. It's because of me. Yes. So that's where we learned that initial I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm doing it wrong, I am inadequate in some way, because that's what it looked like to us. It looked like our caregivers had everything. They were withholding or giving it to us based on our own behavior. And if, and that's it, 
we just felt like that was the end of the, the world, right? Okay, so that's the initial kind of matrix that we live in. And then the second matrix is the, the actual reality that we live on a planet that is unpredictable, okay? So from the very beginning, of human life, of human consciousness, of human awareness. We interacted with nature, we were interacting with nature, we were living in a way where we didn't have technology, we didn't have scientific understanding, we didn't have all of these things that we have now that help us understand how reality works and get our needs met within them. We were interacting with a reality that we didn't understand and true scarcity fully and completely existed. So true scarcity fully and completely existed in real rea in real nature, okay? Not all insecurity, not all not, not having abundance, not all not having our needs met is false, is, is human generated, right? We know that for a long time, multiple civilizations have been wiped out because of drought, have been wiped out because of a weather, circumstance have been wiped out because of a virus or a bacteria or something that our immune systems could not fight off this is reality humans forever from the beginning of our time have been traumatized by the experience of not enough okay have been traumatized by the experience of actually having something happen where we were not able to get our needs met and we died or we suffered, okay? That kind of insecurity has always existed because we live on a planet that is incredibly complex where we can't always understand what, what's going on, where we can't always control the situation. And up to this day, that is still true, right? There are still diseases that we, I know, especially in the health and wellness world, we believe we are we should be able to be completely immune to absolutely everything, but this just isn't a reality. Our bodies are miraculous and are great at adapting and are awesome at developing an immune response to new viruses and all these things when they're supported and we have healthy food and the capacity to support ourselves and all that stuff, but that's not universally available and it's not always true. Yeah, and, and I know some of us believe there's like a cure for cancer that they're just hiding and all these things. And I, and I just think that at the end of the day, we just kind of have to understand that survival is complex. And I know we want to believe we have it all figured out and we're just doing it wrong. But some of us are born with bodies that just are, are already degraded. Some of us are born into countries that just objectively don't have resources like there there are and, and weather patterns happen and that kind of stuff so natural insecurity natural not being able to get our needs met is a reality okay and then on top of that we now live in a world where in the developed nations we have a whole bunch of manufactured insecurity okay a huge amount of manufactured insecurity which in other words is the power structures, the people who hold the power, the means of production have deliberately set up our systems to make it so that certain people groups do not have access to what they need, do not have access to what would be something that would help them survive, to feel secure. And in this, all of the psychological stuff that happens, everything that goes on with that, we create all these feedback loops of how, like power imbalance and all that stuff. Okay, so the other natural thing that exists, that will always exist, okay? The other natural thing that has always existed and will always exist is among humans, there will always be an unequal distribution of power. Among humans, there will always be an unequal distribution of power. Okay? The reality is me being married to my husband, he is objectively stronger than I am. And it would take me a long time <laughs> to work out and, and do whatever I needed to do to get to a place where I was physically 
as strong or stronger than him. The natural power dynamic between the two of us on a physical plane is imbalanced. If he ever decided that he wanted to overtake me, if he ever decided that he wanted to hurt me physically, he could easily do it. And that is a product of nature. He's not inventing that. I'm not just believing something about myself that's making it so that I'm not as powerful as I could be and I'm giving him my power and all of these. No, it is a physical reality that he is stronger than I am. And that is the natural power dynamic that exists between us. And as a human being who's very evolved <laughs> compared to human beings, he would never use that power in our relationship. You see what I'm saying? If he ever decided, look, I want to always just get what I want. I just always want to have the upper hand in this relationship. He could physically overtake me and just do it every time. That's the reality. He doesn't. Thank God. Right? And yes, of course, I could leave. I could do all these things. But, but the thing is that if I want to be in a relationship with him and he wants to be in a relationship with me, the reality is I'm depending on him to never use the power inequity between us to his advantage. Right? And that's a reality. That's a reality in my relationship. I am depending on him who has natural capacity to be stronger than me and to then therefore use that power to determine what goes on in our relationship, whether I like it or not. I am depending on him never accessing that power or using that power against me. That's a natural power dynamic that exists in nature that is not manufactured. So we also need to zoom out and understand that that exists everywhere. Okay? Actual power and the fact that we live right now in systemic structures of power imbalance okay, is a reflection of people who have chosen to say, I have the natural upper hand here and I am going to use it to my advantage. Because this is what we need to understand if we're really going to find a, a community of enough in our world, we have to acknowledge reality. And so long as we say we want an equal society, we want it so that everyone has equal opportunity, we want it so that there aren't these power dynamic problems, we need to understand that like these power dynamic problems have been generated not just out of people being evil, but out of people taking advantage of a natural thing that actually exists. And no, okay, absolutely not. Am I saying that any race or any ethnicity or any skin color or anything are naturally superior to any other being? I do not believe that. Okay, and that is not what I'm saying. Because absolutely, right, we do have right now in our world white supremacy. And I am in no way, shape, or form stating at all in any way that white man is just naturally superior. That is not true. That is absolutely not true. That is not what I'm saying. And that is not the power dynamic that I'm talking about here. What I'm, I'm saying that these natural power dynamics are always going to exist where there are going to be groups of people. There are going to be some people that have learned how to take advantage of other people and will use that to their advantage. Okay, because that's a reality. And we need to move towards a society where we understand that that's possible and where we no longer see that as ultimately valuable. Okay, 
because the systems we're working in right now of competition that have led to these massive power dynamics are not working for anyone. They are not working for the people at the bottom, they are not working for the people in the middle, and they are not working for the people at the top. Okay, so now, I said in my Instagram story yesterday where I was introducing this video that I was gonna give you, right, so the, the question is how do we define enough and how do we find our enough so that we're not being a person who's contributing to the absolute, like, ways all the ways in which we are living as an unsustainable species on this planet. I said I was going to give you my affiliate link code for your minimalism starter pack so that I could teach you how to be a perfect minimalist so that you can stop being, you know, someone who's contributing to the instability of the planet. And I said that as a joke because I understand that so much of the time when I'm talking about finding our enough and all of these things, it sounds like what I'm saying is, okay, you just need to reduce your consumption. You just need to reduce your production. And it's, it's all about like this individual action you're going to take where you, you consume less. And that's how we're going to change our world and create a new different planet. And that is a part of it. That is a small part of it, but that is not it. Okay. That action of reducing consumption and becoming more of a minimalist or being more conscious with how you consume whatever you consume or all that stuff, that's going to be a byproduct of the mental and emotional shift that is actually required to find our enough. And that is going to be something that is a constant negotiation in your life. Okay. So this like, how, how much do I need? How do I know if I'm meeting my own needs? How do I know if I'm taking too much or doing too little or all taking too little and doing too much, how do I know that I'm not out of balance? That's going to be a continual thing we check in with ourselves about and a continual thing we evolve through. And again, something that we understand that partially, we might start to realize that we are absolutely contributing to systems that are unsustainable, but that it's not our fault and we kind of don't really have a lot of say in, in changing right now. And so the biggest key with this, okay, is always self-love and self-compassion, which is to understand that the only reason any of us are living a life where we're disconnected from our bodies, where we're disconnected from our emotions, where we're experiencing situations where we don't have enough, we don't have what we need, we can't provide for ourselves, or we really believe that we need to do more and be more and push harder and produce more and earn more and get more and we just always feel like it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. I need to get more, I need to get more. Even when we're objectively provided for, when we're objectively safe, when we objectively have enough, when we've objectively done enough and we can see this actual, like the real reality, the only reason we are not connected to real reality right? Which is what this system does. It disconnects us from real reality. So we don't know what enough is. Like that's like a, a cosmic term when it should be completely pragmatic. Do you have enough to meet your basic needs? Do you have enough to be comfortable? That's it. That's what having enough is. It's a very practical thing. It's not, it's not an esoteric situation. Like we can ask ourselves, like, am I safe? Do I have enough to, like I say, to live a comfortable, happy life where I can express myself to the degree that I'm, I'm capable of expressing right now? That's it. That's what having enough is. Do I need more in order to be able to live more? Or is continuing to get more causing me to have to live less? These kinds of questions. Yes, it's pragmatic, but the only reason we're disconnected from that, the only reason none of us have any idea of what enough is, the only reason why we all want to strive to be millionaires or have all this abundance or think that we really shouldn't have anything and we should just be as minimalist as possible and all this stuff and we have all this shame and all this guilt and all this confusion is because we live in a system that's messed up. None of us invented this system. 
You did not invent this system. You did not invent this system. You are participating in a system that you did not invent and that you did not opt into willingly. Okay, so if there's any shame or any guilt on any level with anything I'm about to say, step back and understand that is not what I'm saying. Because again, you did not invent this system. You did not willingly opt into this system. You were born into this system and you're living it because it's basically the only system available and trying to step out of it and create something different and do something different is incredibly challenging. Okay. And like I said, I'm not going to give you my affiliate links. I'm not going to give you my affiliate code <laughs> for how to be a minimalist because that would be the exact same thinking with just a different costume as the system. Me just telling you, okay, this is how much you're supposed to have and this is what you're supposed to do and this is what enough is and this is what too much is and this is what you should do is literally the system I'm trying to break you out of. That's why so much of the time people listen to what I'm saying and think that I'm not offering solutions but it's because I am offering a solution, but it is not just the apparent opposite of what we're doing. Okay, what the actual solution for our systems of inequality is, is us understanding, number one, that shame and guilt are lies. We did not invent the system. We are not, and, and I'm gonna get into this in a second, but so much of our personal growth and spirituality stuff is bullshit. Okay? This idea that your life is completely within your control and if you are struggling or suffering it is because there's something wrong with you. That is childhood trauma being played out on a spiritual and self-help by people who are also traumatized, who don't understand human psychology, who don't understand trauma, who don't understand that our system is simply not set up to support most people and in fact it is absolutely set up to antagonize most people and these teachings that absolutely everything is within your control and you can do everything or whatever are just complete victim blaming most of the time it it stops us from calling truth to power it it makes us complicit to things that are absolutely harmful and it it makes us navel gaze to the point where we're not able to say like no 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 this is what's messed up this is what needs to change yes i have power within it and this is the other thing that i'm going to say right is that i'm not saying we have no control over our lives there's no such thing as taking responsibility for yourself there's no such thing as as making things better for yourself within a system that's shitty i'm not saying that because there absolutely is all of those things but when we overtake responsibility, when we over make everything our own fault and our own thing, we miss the point. Okay, so this is what, so if there's any shame or guilt, you need to understand, you did not opt into the systems you're opting into. And the second thing is that we are all traumatized because of the system. I don't care if you're the most privileged, privileged person on this planet. You're a white, cis, het, blonde Christian male <laughs> who has who was born into money like generational wealth if you're that guy versus the most disenfranchised person that's on the planet the boy is white yes <laughs> or the dis most disenfranchised person on the planet everyone is being traumatized by the system that we have not equally, not in the same ways. Some people's trauma is really like, I don't have what I need to survive and I'm not even gonna come close to meeting my potential because I'm so horrified by everything that happened to me. Versus this person who's never gonna be able to connect with their humanity, never gonna be able to connect, connect with what actually matters to them probably, who's always going to be told they need to work harder and strive more and do more and the point of them is to produce capital. 
everyone is getting the shit end of the stick of this deal because that's how reality works. When we build something that is so out of alignment with reality, nobody wins. Okay? Nobody wins. So we need to start to understand that again, no one invented this system, no one listening to this opted into the system, and none of us would choose this system. So you have nothing to feel guilty about. You have nothing to feel ashamed of. Ever. Changing is hard. See, and then again, the fact that we were born into this system means we don't see it. We don't get it. And then on top of that, there's so much manipulation and there's so much indoctrination and there's so much messaging fed to us all day long that tells us it's not the system that's messed up. It's not the ways that the world is that are messed up. Even our freaking spirituality is doing this. It's not out there. It's all in here. If you just reorganize your thoughts and reorganize your perception and reorganize your beliefs enough, you will feel amazing all the time. And if you feel pain, it's because of you. It's because of something inside of you. Absolutely fucking not. No. Okay? Are there times and places where, yes, we're perceiving reality incorrectly and where we're going about things and taking action that are hurting us and harming us and we can do some rearrangement on the inside and change things and then have a better life experience? Yeah. But is that always what it is? No, absolutely fucking not. It just isn't. Okay. Does this, right? Addictions, coping mechanisms, self-sabotaging, all of this stuff. We do it for a reason not because we're just trying to hurt ourselves or just trying to self-sabotage or just are lazy or unmotivated or that there's something wrong with us. No, never. We are traumatized and we are trying to get our needs met the best we can. We're living within a culture that doesn't feel good. We don't know how to feel good. We don't know what we want. We're scared of being rejected. We got trained that being rejected equals death, even though a lot of the time what we have to do to find what's actually true for us is going to get us rejected, so we feel fucked if we do, fucked if we don't. We don't know that there's an alternative because it's not easily and readily available. All we see is the matrix, like the normal person, and then the, the person like whatever, off-grid or doing whatever, the, the, the apparent opposite. The person who has the million dollars or the person who comes up here and says, here's your affiliate code for the minimalist thing. This is not the answer. And then we wonder why we're constantly anxious and constantly depressed and constantly don't know what our purpose is and constantly struggling and self-sabotaging and, and addicted and coping. Well, yeah, we don't know ourselves. We don't know how to know ourselves. We don't know what's good for us. We have a culture that's, like I said, what we were born into. It's the water we're swimming in as the fish. We don't even see it to question it. And then we're told constantly to question ourselves and to feel like we are the problem and to look for how we are fucking it up. And so it's like, no, it's no wonder we don't get it. But this is why I'm saying, don't feel guilty. If you feel guilt or shame about any of the things that I'm about to say, you need to recognize that is a lie. It is always a lie. It is not your fault. It doesn't mean you don't have some power. It doesn't mean you might not be able to do something about it. It just means you're not doing anything wrong and you're not fucking it up, and you're not choosing to hurt yourself or others, okay? So, our systems now of manufactured insecurity, we need to understand this is what's been going on for absolutely ever. This is what has been going on for absolutely ever. This is not a new invention by the white person. The systems that we have right now of power imbalance, of manufactured insecurity for some people with ridiculous abundance for other people is not new. From the very beginning, there were people who had more natural capacity to harm others with their physical strength, to collect resources with their physical strength and hoard it for themselves, who had better immunity than anyone else, who had better capacity for understanding how to survive in the natural world than other people. 
and were therefore able to use that power to manipulate others into serving their desire for more resources in exchange for them not harming them or providing them with resources they couldn't get for themselves. This power dynamic of natural power imbalance has always existed and has always been used to the person who is powerful's advantage, quote unquote. This is not new. Leaders of tribes used physical violence to be able to hoard more resources for themselves, to control their people, to be able to spread their seed more. This was how we started. We started to recognize that if I hoard more for myself, if I control the people, if I convince the people that I provide something that they can't provide for themselves, protection, I will lead, I will take extra responsibility, dominance, established dominance, exactly this. They have done it. And they have done it to their advantage. And they, they have manipulated and used the power and balance that was natural in nature to serve themselves which then evolved into monarchies and systems of leadership and rulership where religion, a lot of the time, spirituality was used as the, the mechanism of defense, saying, I have the divine right to rule. I was ordained by God. Otherwise, how, why would I have these special abilities? Why would I be so much better than you? If it weren't given to me by God, how else do we explain it? It's a natural phenomenon that's existing, and therefore it must be real. And then these people started to be able to accumulate generational wealth. The people who started the monarchs, the people who started being the tribal leaders and then passed that on to their families, and then monarchs passing it on to their families, what they were starting to do, right, was they were starting to develop a preliminary system of owning the means of production. So rather than everything being a barter and I grow zucchini and you help me with your goat <laughs> to plow the field and I give you the zucchini and everything is just a trade based on what is needed, and everyone just giving what it is that they have and taking what they don't have, right? Because we started to have warfare among groups of people. We started to have to do things that we were starting to see that there was some labor that was harder than other labor and some things that seemed to be worth more than other things. And we couldn't quite establish how to just live as equals because we weren't, we weren't equal. We were there again. There were people with much better able body. There were people who were smarter. There were people who were more capable and people who were less capable. And, and there were things that we just didn't value as much as other things. And that was always a part of it. And so we started to, like I say, have these monarchs. We started to have these divine right to rule. We started to use religion and our predilection for spirituality and understanding ourselves through the meaning of things and all of that as a way of reinforcing this now generational wealth that was being passed down and this generational control of the people. The, gen the people who hoarded the wealth started to hoard the means of production. They started to have militaries that supported them and were against the people, the beginnings of police systems, right? That all of this started to be how we started to have these generations of people who were having head starts against other people because they hoarded the wealth. And then we started to see nations being built on the backs of slavery. Slavery is not a new concept in any way, shape or form. And it is, again, not something that the Europeans invented. Sleep, the Europeans did it a lot and 
a, a lot, a lot, but they didn't invent it. All great nations that got large portions of their population out of poverty used slavery. Because in order to conquer and in order to build something the, that was in order to climb out of poverty where we were as a human race into being able to generate massive amounts of wealth accumulation technologies all of these things I don't know what else we could have done but I'm just going to state that what we did do was realize that if we could get a labor force that was essentially given nothing, cost nothing, was disposable, that we could just work and 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 work because we own them. In order to mine natural resources or create buildings or do all of these things that we were doing, we could create these civilizations that were strong on the backs of the people who had to labor in order to build that, but had to labor essentially like machines before we even had machines. That's what slavery did. And colonization, going and taking the resources and the people of, uh, because we have to understand, right, that part of the way that slavery was justified has always been justified is by othering a group of people, by saying they are somehow different from you, they are somehow inferior to you, they are somehow not good enough, they are somehow different. So we can treat them like animals. We can treat them like less than human in order to produce what we need to produce because they are different and this is how the society went along with it this is how we as normal people who weren't in the upper who weren't in the lower looked and saw the atrocities of these things and said okay because again, in these times coming up through history, real insecurity was a real thing. Not having enough food, no. And we shouldn't hate white people. We don't want to hate any people. It, we just need to understand the history of how these things played out. We want to understand the history of how these things played out. Like the place that I am living right now was colonized by the Chinese and the Japanese hundreds of years before it was colonized, before the Europeans. This has been going on forever. This is what humanity has been doing forever. We need to understand this. That if we're really going to develop a new system, we have to be able to say, none of us have clean hands. None of us do. We're not good. <laughs> we're not evil. We were operating from low consciousness. So true insecurity existed. True insecurity existed. And that was another tool of manipulation to get the people to go along with the power structures, saying, we're gonna hold, hoard more because we're here to protect you. The police are here to protect you. We're protecting you from these other people who are enslaved, who are disenfranchised, who don't have what you have, who are othered, okay? And then, who, because of their manufactured insecurity, their manufactured literally being kept out of any possibility for upwards mobility, any access to a proper life that might actually help them, turned them scared and othered, yes, scared, not having enough resources. So of course they're going to uh, revolt, they're going to rise up, they're going to try and get out of that situation. That's natural, that's what a human being would do. And then we're justified in taking them down and killing them and doing all this shit because they're other and they're going to come take your shit. And if, right, you, the, the us part of the civilization, 
want to keep your stuff, we have to protect you from them. And then we come over to the new world and capitalism, and what did we do? Same fucking thing. We were trying to make it an all man equal under the God. No, that is not what happened. Certain groups of people decided, okay, we're going to create essentially a false economy. Okay, we are going to create a false economy. We are going to say goods are worth more than what it takes to actually produce them. And we are going to produce them with a labor force that we don't pay. We are going to say we own the land the, the goods are produced on top of. We own the goods. We own, therefore, the rights to tell you what price it is. And because everyone wants the good or everyone needs the good, we can artificially create the price at whatever we want to create it at so that we garner all these profits. That is how wealth was accumulated. That's how wealth was accumulated. We are going to say we own the means of production for a thing society wants or a thing society needs. We're going to pay our labor force nothing or less than what they deserve. We're going to artificially inflate the price and then everyone's going to buy it. And because we own the means of production, we just keep accumulating wealth. That was how that started to happen. Right? So now in capitalism, in this every man for himself, you can be whatever you want to be, blah, 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 blah. It's not really actually real. Not as real as they say it is. And these spiritual ideas that your life is all your creation and everything that you do, you're doing is because of you and everything you're experiencing is because of you is a manipulation to keep the system how it is. Because in real reality, that is not true. Okay, that is not true. They, we have historical evidence to prove that the separation of people from the means of production, the continual generational groups of people owning the means of production and therefore being in control of the wealth of the nation and then deciding who does and who doesn't have access to that making up literal arbitrary rules for who is part of the in-group, who is part of the out-group, who's going to have access to the jobs, to what jobs, to the wealth. Right? Trickle-down economics never happened. Because this is how it's played out. Okay, so we have an artificial owning of the means of production that now is weak. Okay, and now our systems of production are dependent upon constant consumption. That is how wealth is generated nowadays. By a society that is constantly consumed. If we were, as a population, to decide, actually, I'm good. I'm good where I'm at. I don't need any more. I don't need any more. I am happy where I'm at. I don't need to up, become upwardly mobile anymore. I'm good. I don't need to buy any more clothes for a while. I don't need to buy any more consumer goods for a while. I don't need to buy any more stuff for a while. Our entire economy would collapse. This is what I'm trying to say when I say when we find our enough and we start to check out of the systems even a little bit and not through self-sacrifice, not through not having what we actually need, not through any of that stuff, but realizing that so much of what we're sold, so much of what we're told is important, so much of what we're told is who and what we are and determines our value is false, is manufactured insecurity to keep us in a constant state of overproducing and overconsuming. Okay? So that we keep the system going the way that it is. So, the main thing that I want to say, 
with all of this? Is this idea that is constantly being pumped out to you, that you are not good enough, how you are, that you are not right, that there is something wrong or other about you, that you're coping, you're self-sabotaging, you're scapegoating, whatever it is, is because of you. And you're just not working hard enough and you're not trying hard enough. The idea that we don't take care of our sick people, we don't take care of our elderly people, we don't value people who are aging, we don't value human life as being the thing that is of value. The fact that our biggest industries our biggest industries, our entertainment, right? Like entertainment, distraction, diet industry, the military complex. This tells us we don't live in a society that values life. We don't. We don't value life. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, that's enough. Um, sorry for anyone that was watching, we just had some very inappropriate comments being said. What we need to understand, again, is that, like I say, we live in a system now with manufactured insecurity. We are not being handed equal opportunities to be okay. And like I said, we don't value life. We're not valuing life. We're not valuing what is of value. And so a lot of us are absolutely struggling in this environment. Okay. And, and understanding too. Okay. Now this next big thing, I want to play this little game that everyone's playing on the internet where we all hold up our fingers. And I want you to put your finger down for everything that is true for you. Okay. You ready? So, the, the reason I'm doing this is because, again, so many of us are told that, you know, the environmental destruction that's happening, the reason we're all insecure and, and not loving ourselves enough, and that we don't have enough, or that we're overproducing, or that we're under, we're underproducing, we're under, overconsuming, we're doing all of these things wrong, the reason we're so out of alignment, the reason we're so not good, the reason we're anxious and coping and addicted and self-sabotage is because of us. Right? We're told this over and over and over again by our spirituality, we're told this by everyone, law enforcement, the media, everyone is saying if your life isn't good, it's because of you, because everyone has equal opportunity, and if you're not taking it, it's just your own fault, and all of these things should just be fixed by you. And so come to my program, my $444 mastermind, whatever, I'll fix you. Right? That's the message we're getting over and over and over again. So now everyone put up your 10 fingers and put down a finger for everything that is true for you. Number one, would you willingly, with everything you know right now, choose to have all of our systems be designed around needing fossil fuels? Knowing what you know now, would you have almost everything that needs to be done in our world to provide for our needs be powered by fossil fuels. If you could choose another way of doing things, would you? Or would you choose to keep doing fossil fuels? So if that is something that is true for you, you would choose fossil fuels, put one finger down. How many of you 
would choose to subsidize heavily processed food that has very little nutritional value and make sure that essentially fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and, and natural whole foods are either very rarely equally distributed to all places on the planet and very expensive and would choose to subsidize wheat and dairy to make it so that it's artificially cheaper than it actually is to produce so that our food system is completely imbalanced and doesn't really work for all people on the planet. That health food is essentially a privilege at this point. You have to have money, you have to have access, and that what's mostly available everywhere else is processed food. Put your finger down if you choose that. Okay, put your finger down if you would choose to have most tax money in most countries go towards the military so we can continue to just fight never-ending wars. How many of you would choose to sacrifice so many of the literal people that make up our communities to war if you could not do that? How many of you would choose to continue to have the military be something that is so expensive and something we spend so much of our time and energy and resources on. How many of you would choose to have an education system that lies and indoctrinates and tells a completely false narrative and is unequally, again, available and then is used as a way of gatekeeping who gets access to privileged places in society and who doesn't? How many of you would choose that? How many of you would choose to have most of our consumer goods either be made out of or wrapped in plastic and built on purpose to be un, like not durable, not sustainable, so that you have to keep buying new stuff over and over and over again? How many of you would choose that? How many of you would choose to have a fashion industry that's literally built on the backs of child labor? Because that's how we produce cheap clothing at mass amounts that all then ends up in the landfill because it falls apart. Yeah? How many of you would choose a system where our governments and our laws are pay to play? Where if you are rich, you can literally get away with sex trafficking. You can literally get away with pretty much anything. And if you are poor, or if you are part of the disenfranchised population that needs to be disenfranchised in order for the tops of the society to work, you are gonna be exponentially punished for things that aren't even crimes or lower crimes, where rich people can do so much worse than that and get nothing. Would you choose that? How many of you would choose a system where you're constantly being told you're not enough, you don't have enough, you're not doing enough, if you find yourself doing better, having more, all these things, you're going to find happiness, you're going to find peace, and all of your insecurity and all of your fear is coming from the fact that you're not manifesting enough? Would you choose that? Okay, I think you get my point. I'm going to assume no one put their fingers down, right? You did not invent this system. You did not invent this system. And then on top of that, the teachings that have been passed down from spirit through spirituality from forever, that we're not supposed to get angry, that we're not supposed to look outside of ourselves for what might be wrong, that we're not supposed to be politically active, that everything is in our own heads and everything is in our own minds and everything is within our control. And you can have whatever life you want if you just think about it hard enough. What do these teachings actually do? Do they actually empower us? No. They teach us to never rise up against a thing that is truly harmful. They teach us to continually navel gaze at ourselves instead of seeing where the systems are fucked up and need to be changed. It keeps us in a place where we have 
less compassion for other people groups. We literally are continually seeing other in other people groups. Because we have been indoctrinated to believe that if you're poor or if you're addicted or if you don't have enough, it's because of something wrong with you. You did something wrong. You're not strong-willed. You're not good enough. They couldn't have anything to do with a structural thing. Okay? This is where this, this not enough comes from. So what we need to realize as people who are generally in the like middle class is that this constantly being told that you're not good enough is how the system is being maintained. The fact that you are sold goods based on what it is going to make you look like, how it's going to get you accepted or approved of, the fact that we have, if you're not working this kind of job, if you don't have this kind of education, if you're not doing this kind of thing, blah, 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 you're not good enough. The fact that we believe we need to monetize literally every single one of our creative passions or personality traits or we feel like again if we're not manifesting abundance from living our passion that we're not doing it right and all of these things this is all a reflection of a system that needs you to be constantly feeling that manufactured insecurity so that you stay being someone who constantly believes it's your fault so you will continue to work harder blame yourself consume more not need to numb, need to cope, need to scapegoat, be addicted, all of this stuff feeds the system. This is how the system maintains itself. It's like, why don't we have healthcare? Why don't we have equal distribution of resources? Because the system would collapse then. If we all felt secure, if we were all taken care of, if we all felt like there was a safety net, the system would fall apart. And the other way that people who are in power maintain their power is by allowing the people in the middle to innovate, to be creative, to work really hard and hustle and grind and invent stuff and do all this stuff. And then what, the, then what happens? What they create, what they produce, if it is proved to be of value in the system as in people will buy it, those are the top purchase it. They then own the means of production and then someone gets a million dollars or a billion dollars and we think, oh my God, wow, right? Like they made it. And all that did was again, they created something that is going to continue to generate wealth. Someone who has all the money bought it from them and now they will continue to produce, to own the means of production, the thing that is of value and all the people are just paying for it and it looks like that american dream happened when it just upheld the system completely do you see what i'm saying it is not your fault it is none of our faults that we are in this position where we constantly feel like we're not enough like we're constantly not good enough it doesn't matter how much we have and like right the spiritual teachings now the abundance and we're supposed to be millionaires and like It's, it's coming from a, a misunderstanding where we can't feel what we're doing because we're so caught up in being told there's not enough. And for some of us, there truly actually isn't enough. And it's all of this stuff. So what do we do? What's, again, I know this is a lot to look at. And I, and, and I am not here to say that like, this is how we're going to take the system down because I think it's just it's going to be a progression over time right more and more of us who are awakening to the idea that this system it is what it is it got us to where we are okay but it's not going to work long term it's really falling apart so what are we going to do instead how are we going to start to create actual sustainable means of production how are we going to start to create sustainable lives for ourselves we are going to even though it kind of goes against what I've just been saying. Start with ourselves in the sense of, again, understanding that how we actually break ourselves out of this matrix is by first starting to break ourselves out of the not enough mindset. 
the constant, I am not enough, I am not good enough, I have to change my body, I have to change my mind, I have to change what, 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 anything that's wrong in my life is because I suck and we need to shift into, okay, how is this me doing the best that I can with what I've got? How is this me, like what in the system is making it so that I am this way? What am I angry about? What am I sad about? What hurts for me to continue to do? And instead of blaming yourself for that, can you start to have compassion for yourself for that? And I know that doesn't sound like anything. I know that doesn't sound like how are we going to take down the system if all of us are just liking ourselves. But again, the more we do these practices, the more we stop blaming ourselves, the more we stop taking on the idea that it is truly something wrong with us that we are where we are. And we start to say, no, this isn't true. And I'm constantly being, being told I'm not good enough and I'm not right and all these things. And no, that isn't true. The more we will start to see, the more we will start to be able to feel, okay, I don't need to participate in that. You won't need someone to say, you've got to stop participating in fast fashion. you got to stop watching TV. you got to stop contributing to these things. you got to give up Starbucks, all these things. You won't need someone to tell you that. You will start to feel throughout your day, one step at a time, slow and compassion, what you actually need. Do you need to work more or is this good enough? Do you need another thing or is this good enough? And then it's not swinging the other way where you have guilt for everything, because remember, you didn't create the systems. It is not your fault that everything's wrapped in plastic. It's not your fault that every, nothing is sustainable and you have to buy new stuff every once in a while because everything falls apart because it's made to. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that our systems are unsustainable. And again, so much of what we're finding out now about like environmental impact and all these things, if every human being on the planet reduced their carbon footprint or whatever, it would literally mean almost nothing because it's the corporations that are doing things. So again, the more we pull out of supporting corporations via over-consuming. So again, this doesn't mean you never consume something from a corporation. If all of us just drastically reduced our consumption, corporations would not be as powerful as they are. They would stop having all the money. If we started as just little by little, supporting ourselves in the ways that we can, being more community oriented. Just little by little, like little, little, these little actions accumulate to the point of taking power away from the systems. The more we believe in ourselves to be valuable, the less we are willing to sacrifice ourselves for things that are less than what we deserve, and the less we are willing to participate in systems that are fucking us. But the, I think the main thing is to first look at all of this and say, this is not your fault. We need to get out of the spiritual self-help, self-improvement garbage that tells us that our pain is our fault. And that what's wrong with us is all our fault. It is not. And again, there's a huge difference between something being your fault and you have some power to change it. Because again, you do have the power to start to make some shifts, to make things better for yourself. I didn't have the money to just like, right? Like I'm not living on a fully sustainable property, but I am less dependent on the system now than I ever was. And I just took steps. I'm not a perfect minimalist. I still depend on corporations every once in a while. I am not up here saying I am some perfect thing. That is not true. I have taken steps. I consume less. I am out of the system as much as I possibly can be, and I will continue to be. Because I keep reinforcing my own idea of enough, what is actually enough, and not taking more than that. And it means that I just don't consume to the degree that everyone else is consuming. And again, if everyone did that, we would have so much less money going to corporations, so much more money going to communities. And that would naturally shift the power dynamic, because it would have to. Do you see what I'm saying? This is an internal thing 
first, that becomes an external thing. You need to stop feeling shame and guilt for who you are and what you want and what you need. Yes. And then you need to start to feel if what you want and what you need is really what you want and what you need, or if it's, if I do this, I will be loved and approved of and accepted in, in culture. That, right, we start to dis dis discern between true pain and consensus reality pain and true pleasure and consensus reality pleasure. That's why this self-love is such a jailbreak. When you are no longer dependent on being approved of in a society that doesn't approve of you unless you're doing all the things that are leading to our destruction. Essentially. Right? It's a snake eating its own tail. When you are no longer dependent on approval, you will start to see the things you actually want to participate in, the things you want to check out of, what you actually need right now, how you can move towards depending less and less. Because again, the person who's at the very bottom and doesn't have money and is totally just, they're not going to be the ones to break apart the system. The people at the top aren't going to break apart the system. They don't want to. It's working for them. It's us in the middle. Those of us with disposable income, those of us who do have some choice with how we spend our money, those of us who do have some choice to just say, I'm not going to keep working more, I'm not going to keep doing this, I'm going to redistribute some resources to some people who need it, right? Those of us who have the power to do that, and, I'm, and that's why I'm saying, I'm not going to stand up here and say, this is what everyone should be doing, because everyone's in a different situation. Everyone has a different financial situation. Everyone has a different amount that they actually are secure. Right? So again, I'm not saying if you literally are living paycheck to paycheck or can't make rent or whatever that you need to figure out how to not consume from corporations. That is not on you. You need to, right? That's not your job. But for those of us who have disposable income, those of us who do have the capacity to decide where we're putting our money and to check out of things and to, like I say, reinvest in community and do all this stuff, we should. It's, it's not a black and white blanket, this is what everyone should be doing. It's everyone for themselves decides what power do I have and where can I use it. And the more we understand that you are good enough, you are enough just as you are right now. You don't have to be approved of by society standards. What do you actually want? And again, I know all of us say, but if I'm totally disapproved of by society standards, everyone rejects me, I can't make money, I can't do And I'm going to say, the, the truth of, the idea that that's going to be your reality is probably not true. All of us really believe if I take the leap off the ledge, if I am my real self, if I stop participating, everyone's going to abandon me and I'm going to die. I, we all think that. And it's not reality. It just isn't. For 99.999% of us, you will find a new community. You will find people that do value you. You will figure out a new way. You will take steps. You're not going to be dropped off the face of the planet, I promise. It all it feels like that in our nervous systems, and that's why I talk so much about the nervous system. Right? Don't take a jump, don't take a leap right now. Love yourself, say, learn these principles of self-love. Learn these principles of self-support so that you can see yourself through taking little steps. It's, it's incremental. How we get out of this, the, the solution that I'm offering is not a thing you do. It's first you develop that self-love and that inner safety. That's the first key. Compassion and curiosity for yourself. What hurts and why does it hurt? What are the stories I'm telling myself? Where was it true in my childhood? How is it maybe not true anymore? And then we start to be able to take little steps out little changes little doing things based on our feeling and what we're seeing as we're coming out of that fear state and we be and we can support ourselves through taking those little incremental steps and see that we don't die and see that we figure it out and see that it again it's just little steps so that's what i'm saying the whole of civilization isn't going to change overnight because of a person being radical it's going to be little steps we take over years and it's just the more of us that start to understand that the more we value ourselves and the more we start to actually value real life and see that rejection doesn't equal death, 
the more we're going to start to check out of the systems and build new ones at the same time, slowly over time, that creates a change. And I'm not saying there isn't going to be a revolution. I'm not saying people aren't going to rise up and there isn't going to be something. I don't know. But what I'm saying is this will definitely be a part of it. Because we need something new. If we just revolt, the natural pow power imbalance is still going to be there and we will just recreate the same system. If we don't change our fundamental perspectives, we're not going to have something new. So this is how we do this. You find your enough from within by loving yourself. And that is going to change how you consume. That is going to change how you produce. That is going to change what you do and where you see your power as being and what you see as important. And that is what's going to change the world. So I don't have an affiliate link for you. I just say, you are good enough. You are worthy. The more you believe that, the more you're going to change your life, the more everything is going to change. And we rise up as a community. Right? That you will make a video like this that will inspire your friends. And it's not just individuals taking action. It's us working together. Okay. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that was helpful. I hope that was validating that this is not your fault and there's nothing wrong with you. You are worthy and good enough just as you are. Yeah. We do need new systems and we're going to build it together. So, everything that was said, how do we define enough? How do we get to a place where we understand what our enough is, where we understand what we need, where we understand what we don't need, where we can check out of the matrix, where we can find what truly serves us, what truly allows us to express our potential as best we can given the circumstances we're in, and how do we start to check out of these systems of harm, of exploitation, of overconsumption, and overproduction. And what I, I, I want us to understand that what I'm about to say is going to sound meta <laughs> until it doesn't. It's going to sound like a concept until it starts to make sense because we start to have an experience of it. So. What we need to understand is that foundationally, basically, bottom line, we are life, just like all other forms of life, and life wants to express its genetic potential. Okay? We have the same basic understanding building blocks of what is allowing us to express that potential, what is something that is supporting our growth, what is something that is enhancing our life experience, versus something that's antagonizing, something that's destructive, something that's not supporting us in our growth. And that awareness is the awareness of pain and pleasure. Okay, so it's a feeling. It's something we experience first in the body. It's something we first experience in feeling, in the emotions, in these, like I say, these feeling situations. And then because of how reality unfolds, when we are experiencing something, that is contrary to our growth or that is supportive of our growth, we will see the results of that later in time, right? Because of the way that time unfolds. So first things first, we feel it experientially. We feel it in our bodies, we feel it in our emotions, and then we see the results, the outcomes in our reality as we move forward. So we have to understand, and then the intellect understands that figure something out from it, and then reorients our behavior, rechanges what we're doing, keeps going the way that we're going in order to keep that growth going or in order to try to get away from the pain, okay? That is what it is to be life. And we as human life have some special ingredients that isn't just genetics wanting to express themselves and pain making us recoil from that which is harmful to us and pleasure making us feel attracted to what is, is beneficial for us, we also have self-awareness, which is a huge thing, yes? That self-awareness of being able to see ourselves, being able to think about ourselves, being able to understand, right? This second part of self-awareness is this existential awareness that we are born and that we are going to die, 
but we don't know why or how we're going to die. We don't know when we're going to die, and we don't know where we go after we die. So we have that. We also have the ability to project into the future and to remember the past, and we have the capacity to make meaning and tell stories. Okay? And all of this adds a whole bunch of complexity to our experience of genetic potential expression and our experience of pain and pleasure. Yes? So we can make up stories about pain and pleasure that are not true. We can experience a painful experience and we can, we can justify how that is a good thing. We can experience something pleasurable and we can justify how that is a bad thing. At the same time, we have a consensus reality that we all learned in our childhoods, right? That acceptance equals approval equals provision equals survival and that rejection equals not having our needs met equals dying. Yes? So that got weaved in to our experiential projection, how our mind is creating this reality that we see, how our mind is interpreting the reality that we're going in, and that crosses our pain and pleasure wires. Yes? Because again, in our childhoods, that which was best for our genetic potential growth may have been something that got us rejected. And in that temporary environment, doing what was going to get us accepted but was against our genetic potential was better for our survival than doing what was true to us but then was going to get us rejected. Same thing with doing what got us rejected being, you, you get it, right? The both ways. So we have these pain and pleasure signals but for most of us we don't understand what our pain and pleasure is telling us because we can't tell the difference between consensus reality pain and pleasure and true pain and pleasure. And then also, again, this isn't to say that then when we grow into adults, um, we never need anyone ever again. We never need um, other people and we never work together. We never are a co-optive collective. That's not true. However, the way that we have set up our collective right now is out of alignment with reality. The way we are trying to work together doesn't work with how reality actually works. Because of the systems that we have in our culture, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a second, because of the way that our culture is set up, because of the way that our systems are set up, we have kind of recreated on a macro level uh, a, an experience of our childhoods where doing what gets us approved of and what gets us accepted and therefore into the fold and then access to things and so there is nothing, I'm not trying to say that being rejected from culture, that not being a part of culture is always just a completely no problem thing, or that we don't need to be accepted because of course, right, we have to understand we are a collective, we are individuals that work together best in a community, that survive in a community. None of us are surviving on our own. We are all borrowing from the technology and the understanding and the infrastructure of everyone else. So we have to understand that, of course, in this culture, we are, like I say, recreating our childhoods, where the systems and the structures that get us access to the goods and the resources that we need to survive, what we have to do so much of the time to get those things is to go against our genetic potential, is to go against who and what we actually are, is to go against against what would be best for us as, a, as an individual and best for us as a species in order to fit in. And a lot of the time when we're doing what is truly best for us and what is best for the species and what is best for the planet, we are going to be rejected. And that, that does hinder our access to the things that we need to survive. So this is not complete, right? There are definitely a lot of ways in which all of us can step out of the matrix be rejected and be totally fine. There are lots of ways in which that is true. And to say that we can just become complete recluses and have absolutely no one who cares about us and just completely survive on our own is probably also a fiction. Okay? So with our capacity to understand ourselves, to see ourselves, to make meaning, to make stories, what we have all done is connected a sense of purpose and meaning 
to our genetic expression. So just like all the rest of life, we want to express our genetic potential. We want to become all that we are capable of becoming. Just like an oak tree wants to become the greatest oak tree, it has the genetic potential to become. A fox wants to become the greatest fox, it has the genetic potential to become. And it's using pain and pleasure and response to environment and adaptation and moving all these ways and doing all these things in order to best create that outcome. We are doing the same thing, except that because of our storytelling capacity and our meaning making, we have made living our genetic potential meaningful. It has purpose. There's a reason. We want a narrative. We want, we want it to make sense. We want it to have this purpose and this meaning. Yes? And that's the biggest thing. So when everyone's saying, like, what's my purpose? And what do I want? And what is, what is the meaning of this? And all of these things. Usually what we're really saying is, I want to feel like I'm expressing my genetic potential to the greatest of my capacity. And when we aren't having that experience, when we don't feel like that's happening, and again, I'm saying feel, not think. When we don't feel like that's happening, life feels meaningless. We feel existential dread. We feel like we are messing up. We feel like we're missing something. We feel incomplete. We don't feel satisfied in this life because that is just a part of our complexity, okay? So we have all of that. And now humanity has historically been traumatized by not enough. We have all in every single one of our lineages experienced not having enough, either truly not having enough or the perception of not having enough. And that traumatizes us again, because we're not like animals who experience a moment of fear or a moment of having something and then we shake it off and that's it. When we experience not enough, when we experience the trauma of weather knocking out our, our crop, when we experience our entire um, community being wiped out by a disease, when we experience being rejected by our caregivers, we don't just have that experience and then move on. We tell stories about it. We make meaning around it. We project it into the future and we we come up with all these reasons and these stories and all of this narrative around it, which again is helpful and beneficial when it's true, when we're understanding why that happened and what it meant and how we can actually work with that in order to prevent those things from happening again in the future. But it's detrimental to us when we make up stories about that thing that aren't true, that don't align with how reality actually is, and then we go about doing things and creating actions and creating systems that are out of alignment with what actually happened, out of alignment with what we actually need, and don't support our growth. Okay, But because we have an intellect that can make up a story for anything and that can justify anything, yes, we have done that over and over and over again as a humanity. And that's where we got the structures that we have today. That's where we got the power structures we have today. Okay, So all of our basic power structures, all of our consensus reality with a capital C, this is what you need to do to survive, this is how our world works, was mostly based on trauma. The trauma of not enough, the trauma of being, you know, abused by someone else, the trauma, trauma, trauma of we don't know how to survive, we're trying so hard to survive, we're trying to collect resources, obviously more access to resources gives better outcomes, so more and more and more would be better. And then experiencing this like this delusion, essentially, that competition is how we do it, that competition is what this is, that there's not enough, and we have to fight each other for what there is, and we have to defend ourselves, and we have to, my territory and your territory, and I am me, and you are you, and we are separate, and seeing each other as that, and that all happened for a good reason, in the sense that we were low consciousness and we have been developing that over time but we were traumatized and then over time what we have done is due to the pain of that trauma and due to the pain of us creating systems that logically made sense to us but felt bad in our in our bodies but we didn't feel like we had any other chance or any other way of doing things based on that trauma we have over the generations learned more and more and more to rely more and more and more on the intellect and less and less and less on feeling because this made things simpler. So most of the structures that we exist in today, all of the power structures we have are based on logic 
they are based on understanding, they are based on stories we're telling ourselves that don't necessarily align with actual reality because we're cut off from that other guidance system of our feeling, okay? So we have given justification to things like slavery. We have given justification to things like exploitation of children. We've given justification to wiping out the native population or building on lands that are rich in natural resources and cutting down all the trees and cutting down all of the plant life in order to build pipelines. Like we've given justification to these things. And logically those people in power have said, well, this is how I have success. This is how I have accumulated wealth. And we talked about that before, that the structures of wealth generation that we have created right now, again, is still built on wealth being the thing for survival, which is a false understanding. Understanding how to work with reality and get our needs met and understand what our needs are and how to do that in real reality is the answer. But we have built all of our systems on this. We're going to create false profit and false value in things. And we're gonna we're gonna own means of production, we're gonna own people, we're gonna use this dominance that we have figured out how to do, we're gonna take for ourselves, we're gonna continue to other different groups of people, we're gonna figure out who is me and who is not, we're gonna create all these systems around this competition, the survival of the fittest, this false narrative around what is and isn't valuable, but around creating what is necessary for life and then gatekeeping that you see we've created all these structures and we justified them afterwards even though we're getting bad results people are suffering and we had to cut ourselves off from our humanity in order to do it this is the big thing that right now the power structures that we all have that we all were born into that we all exist in were built on logic and reason and short-sightedness where we were cut off from feeling because it made it simpler in the moment to just do the thing that was going to accumulate the most wealth for the people who were dominating and then there was coming up with justifications afterwards to explain why it was okay and why it was all right and it all came from the trauma of not having enough every civilization that has colonized that has been brutal that has dominated has come from we're trying to survive we're trying to accumulate the most resources possible because that seems to be what is required for us to survive and we're in competition because there isn't enough and that's how it was so just because we can dominate just because we can enslave people just because we can work from this competition doesn't mean it's the highest thing doesn't mean it's right. And the way for us to figure these things out is not just to say, what's the short-term outcome that I'm experiencing right now? We have to feel it, okay? So this is part of the reason why all of our global systems work the way that they do and we can look at them as empathic people and be like, this is clearly fucked up. This clearly doesn't work. Why are we doing this? Because we can still feel. Because we can still feel, that is the bottom line. It's like. We're not the ones to sit here and say, okay, yeah, sure, great. The dominant um, people are getting all the resources and are super wealthy and doing great. We can't look at that and say success because we're seeing all the people that have to be exploited, all the people who have to be left out, all the people who have to be intentionally left out for that to happen, and we feel that. Even if we don't know why we're feeling it, even if we're not even looking at that, but we know we feel like shit in this culture, that is because we weren't cut off from our feelings, okay? So then in this society that we exist in, yes, we are born and we are immediately trained to cut ourselves off from feeling. Every turn, at every way, we are trained that you have to memorize how reality is, that you have to memorize what people want, that you have to live in alignment with the cultural standards. And these are things that oftentimes hurt. 
These are things that we make ourselves do that do not feel good. And we're trained that you get the reward for doing that. That that is what success is. And the things that do feel good to us so much of the time, that which would actually allow us to express our genetic potential, are shamed and blamed and guilted and we're cut off from that stuff because it doesn't serve the patriarchy, it doesn't serve capitalism, it doesn't serve to keep the structures the way that they are. We're indoctrinated with religion, we're indoctrinated with education, we're indoctrinated with governments, we're indoctrinated with the news all day long that these people are bad and these people are other and these people are whatever. And we're, like I say, so we live in this reality where we do constantly feel like shit. We feel bad. And because we're cut off from being able to determine what is best for us and what isn't, and our genetic growth and our genetic potential, because we have to fit in to this culture, because that's the only thing we have. Because when we don't have fitting in, if we're not trying to fit in, if we're not trying to be what everyone wants us to be, if we're not going along with our conditioning, most of us are like, well, then I have no fucking idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, we go into like deep existential dread and deep existential fear because, again, we're cut off from the guidance system that would allow us to feel for ourselves that we're on our path of ex exploration and growth. And again, for most of us, we're not. We've been so cut off from it. We've been so indoctrinated into culture that when we start to feel, that when we start to question stuff, that when we start to even look under the under the rug of why am I coping, why am I self-sabotaging, why am I numbing, why am I addicted, why am I doing all these things, we find all this pain and all this existential dread and all this feeling that we're missing our lives and we're not doing it right and oh my god, I'm not living my purpose and I don't know what it is and all these things. And that's true to an extent because we have been cut off, right? been so cut off from feeling, been so cut off from how to do what, I, what we need to do and what we don't need to do, and so viscerally trained that fitting into culture is the only way. That of course we have that existential dread. And then what does our system do? Our systems understand this. They have figured this out to a degree. That we all feel existential dread, that we all feel pain, that we all feel lost that we all feel like we don't have purpose and meaning and that we need to fit in and we need to survive and we don't know how to do it and we don't know what enough is and we, because we're cut off, okay? Because again, when we're truly living our lives from where we, from this place of being able to determine for ourselves in every moment, okay, what do I feel? Is this right? Is this wrong? Is this good? Is this bad? Is this, is this supporting my growth? Is this not supporting my growth? We don't have existential dread because that is how you live in every moment feeling like you're on purpose in that it's not this big complex goal thing that you achieve at some point in your life like that's matrix consensus telling you what purpose is purpose does not feel like that purpose is something you feel every single day as you're just navigating your feelings and matching that with how reality works and logic and outcome and doing that over and over again right and this is a skill that we learn and we develop over time because again so many of us our feelings of pain and pleasure are so wired with survival of fitting in that we can't understand the difference and so it takes a long time often for us to disconnect from what society has told us is the right and wrong thing and we have to go through that grieving process and we have to go through those dark nights of the soul and the wilderness where we feel like we don't know anything and we have no idea who we are and we're never going to figure it out and all that stuff. That's normal and we have to go through that. And most of us don't <laughs> because it's so scary, right? And it just absolutely is. It's losing your foundations. It's completely losing everything you thought you were or maybe not completely. It's a large part of losing everything you thought you were or everything you thought you had to do. And it's a lot of not knowing. And then reconnecting, and I, I like to describe it like we've all been living with our bodies, like literally numb from the head down, or been trained that pain is good and pleasure is bad, or this kind of pleasure is the right kind of pleasure, and we're operating from trauma and misunderstanding and projection instead of actual pain and actual pleasure, right? We're responding to our pain and pleasure with these major trauma trauma understandings without actually understanding what I'm what we're actually feeling. So that's why I say like the biggest thing is to learn how to pause, right? How to stop and have a feeling and not act on it immediately.
Like that is huge if you just do that over and over and over again for a couple of years. You actually question what you're feeling. Is this consensus reality? Is this true reality? What is actually happening? Orienting all this stuff. Questioning what we're making our feelings mean. Questioning what we're making all these things mean. This is huge. That'll be all you ever need to do to figure out your life. And that's why this self-love thing, and that's why I'm saying, defining our enough isn't a, a minimalism thing, isn't an abundance coach thing, isn't a what's the right thing to do, how do I rebel from society, how do I fit into society. It's somewhere in the middle. It's going to be a handful of things from all different areas because it's different for all of us at different points in our lives. Okay, so we're trained to be cut off, and then that is actually how, because we're cut off from feeling, we feel existential dread, everything hurts, we're confused about everything, and that's how the system keeps us hooked in. That is how the system keeps us hooked in to this overconsumption, overproduction, exploitation, messed up way that we're competition, survival of the fitness way that we're doing things. It keeps us hooked in because it continues to reinforce and feed back to us. The reason you don't feel good about yourself, the reason you're not feeling your life purpose, the reason you're doing all this stuff is because of you. There's this ultra independence, this everything is your fault, everything is your responsibility, everything is on you, so if you don't feel good, it's you, it's not us. So that's the first thing. That's totally fucked up, that's not true. How the system operates is harming us. A lot of us are in pain simply because trying to fit into what society tells us to do is bad for us. That's why we feel that way. And again, no one I know is choosing to live in a world where we're dependent on fossil fuels, where absolutely everything is wrapped in plastic and doesn't need to be, where we're polluting the, atom, the, the earth at ridiculous amounts, where we're in competition with each other instead of learning how to be in community. None of us would choose that, and yet we live in a society where we have to participate in those things, and therefore we feel like shit, because we all have feeling, and so much of the time, we're not feeling what we're doing, what we're specifically making a choice about. We're feeling the misalignment of the collective, of, co the collective of the systems that exist that we are being forced to participate in every single day, so because the alternatives are either so hard to explain Experience. You have to have money in order to do it, or you right, you have to work so hard to find an alternative to do something different that it's essentially impossible. So we have that, okay? And then, on top of that, they tell you, don't worry, we can sell you your meaning. We can sell you your purpose. We can sell you fitting in. You need more stuff. You need more thing. You need more trend. You need more whatever. And the consumer market, again, that is based on artificial value continues to feed itself based on this false narrative of continually creating trends, creating the new thing you have to have, creating scarcity where it doesn't exist, right? So we exploitate groups of people, we, we don't pay them, we keep them out of access to places in, in humanity where they can move up, so they continue to be cheap labor, which then continues to make it so that we can produce all these things for a lower price, but the owners, right, the means of production, the people who own the means of production are making a profit off of exploited labor and inflated prices, and then the continuing of trends and everything's new and nothing is ever the same, and you, like, you constantly have to have new clothes, you constantly have new technology, new things, everything's changing on social media all the time. We are constantly feeling like we have to keep up, we have to keep up, we have to keep up, and it reinforces that narrative that I feel like shit and I don't feel good enough and I don't have culture, my community and all these things because I'm not fitting in, I'm not doing enough and we're constantly told, produce more, be more successful, don't be lazy, all of these things. And again, who does that profit? All of us running around like chickens with our heads cut off maybe becoming millionaires is not for our benefit. Just because you become a millionaire, the reason you become a millionaire is because a billionaire decided what you have sells enough that they're going to own you. They're going to they're gonna buy what you are selling. They are going to buy what you are. You are going to be corporate advertisement. You are going to be corporate music. You are going to be corporate whatever. And that's when you start making the real money, when someone pays for you who owns the means of production. So all of us running around like chickens with our heads cut off, working, 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 does not benefit us. And then every time they dangle a millionaire in front of us, we're like, see? Y'all should be working harder. Y'all should be doing more. If you innovate enough, if you do the right thing enough, you will be 
abundant. But that's just, like I say, so much of the time, that's just, that's how, that's, that's corporate sponsorship that we are being a millionaire because of. And, and, and I'm not saying always, I'm not saying everyone who's a millionaire is doing that, but like, that's, you have to play the game. And that's what the game is. Becoming a millionaire and being incredibly wealthy, oftentimes, not always, not every single time, is because you sold yourself to the system that's continuing to keep itself going, okay? And then we blame ourselves and we question ourselves. And then at the same time, we're all so afraid for ourselves. We're all feeling so horrible. We're all like lost in that when people groups are exploited, that when we're told on the news that this group of people is coming for your stuff, that when we're told these are the bad guys, these are the good guys, these are the wrong ones, these are the right ones, we believe it and we buy into it. And then when those people are exploited, when those people's land is taken, when those people are hurt, when, when, when we know that these horrible atrocities are taking place, we don't do anything about it. We can't feel it. We don't see it. And even if we do, we don't know what to do about it because we're all so overwhelmed by ourselves. And then, right, we can see that like we live in a world with a justice system that is not a justice system. Those with the most money and power and access can literally do whatever the fuck they want because they own the means of production. They own us, <laughs> they own everything. What are we gonna do? How do we hold them to account? Essentially, in a lot of ways, we can't. And then those with the least are the most punished and the most disenfranchised and the most cut off from access and resources and all of these things and exploited. And then they turn to crime and then they turn to self-harm and then they turn to harming another. And they, we have all these systems where the more disenfranchised you are the less you have of course the more dangerous you're going to appear because you're just trying to survive you're trying to fight in a system that forces you to fight and then punishes you for fighting and it's ridiculous but that's how we can see it we we literally get brainwashed into believing that that's true instead of saying like no this system is completely built on disconnection from humanity and that is why it doesn't work that is why none of us can find our enough that is why it doesn't make sense to any of us. Why it feels so bad. So much of the time, it doesn't feel bad because you're doing something wrong. You don't feel like you're not living your purpose because you're doing something wrong. It's because the way you have been trained to live your life is cut off from feeling. And you're trying to fit into a society that does not work. That does not support our growth. That is never going to feel good. Because it can't. Nothing that opposes growth the way that our society does is ever going to feel good. It can't because we are still life. And this is why so much of the time, even in the spiritual world and the self-help world, they are trying to teach us to dissociate from our emotions. And this is like the hugest red flag I've ever seen, that to be transcended is to be in a state of peace all the time is to be in a state of oneness all the time, is to see that everything is perfect and exactly how it should be. No, that is so fucked up. That is so fucked up. And I don't, again, I'm not upset with these people because I understand the trauma of being in our society where so many things are completely out of our control. I would want to dissociate to you if I could. I would want to say this isn't anything to do with me. And I know a lot of people who have so much pain and, and depression and anxiety and all of these things from their trauma of their childhoods they don't know how to fix because they don't know how to address it because that's a huge thing addressing our trauma and addressing why we are the way we are and we have the problems that we have and the addictions and the scapegoats and the problems and the pain of being rejected by our caregivers that is so hard to look at that is so hard to work through questioning their authority instead of just blaming ourselves is so hard because it's questioning your foundations for what you were trained with how you're going to live and how you're going to have success. Questioning the matrix, again, so hard. Because you can't, we can't tell the difference between like, what do I actually have to do in order to survive and what, where can I be rejected and be okay? And it really feels like we're going to die all the time. Like it feels so heavy. And so I get it. But we are a humanity who's disconnected from our guidance system of feeling what doesn't feel good and figuring out why that doesn't feel good and feeling what feels good and figuring out why that feels good and understanding that we are being so brainwashed and so conditioned like the purity way like no sex and no like control people's sexual urges control the means of production 
control people, telling them that it's virtuous to work hard and terrible to take a break. And if you're struggling, it's your fault. And the system isn't responsible for you. And no one should ever have to be responsible for you. And if you can dominate, you should. And it's all competition. Yeah. We feel like shit. And we never feel like we're good enough. And we never feel like we're doing enough. And we never can figure out how much is enough. Because we're constantly scared. We're constantly being triggered into being scared. And then following along with the matrix. Or trying to dissociate from our feelings more with spirituality. Or trying to assume that everything is fine. So again, I understand. There are times and places where we need to accept what is. And to stop fighting with it. And we accept what is so we can understand it. And then we can work with it. But again, just because something is the way that it is, doesn't mean it's the highest thing. Right? Accepting, yes, this is how this is, and it's like this for a reason. That is true. Cause and effect. Everything that is how it is, is operating under the laws of reality. When you do this, you get this outcome. So, everything we have done, all the outcomes we are experiencing as humanity, is because of what we have done. And this is what should be happening in the sense of, this is how reality works. When you do this, you get this outcome. When you exploit a group of people, this is the outcome you get. That does not make it the best thing. That does not make it right. That does not make it life generating. Just because it is how it should be based on cause and effect is not the same thing as saying, so therefore we shouldn't change it. Of course not. When something hurts, when we do something and it hurts, and then we get a negative outcome, that is the point of our awareness. So we can say, okay, that didn't work, right? And again, we can all go back and see that it all started with the intention of survival. It all started with the intention of we're just trying to survive the best we know. And now we know better. We have outcome. We can say, okay, this system, it did what it did. You can see what we were trying to get at here. The dominance, the competition, all that stuff. It got us to where we are. Great. Now we need to start to say, what about this isn't working? If there's pain, something isn't working. There's a lot of pain. I don't know if you've noticed. Most people, even those people who have all the access in the world, are in pain. People who have no access are in pain. Because there are still things that are out of alignment with the way that we're doing things. And if we are going to, again really take our power in this system because at so many levels we can't just force the government to be different we can't force corporations to be different we can't just say come on you guys you need to change because it's true they own the means of production so much of the culture that we live in it is what it is and then where we have power is where we start to dissociate and disconnect from this idea that we suck that we are in pain because we are not enough. And we start to question every little bit of it. And this is a hard process and this is a long process. That's why I'm saying it's going to sound meta till it doesn't. We start to question absolutely every feeling we have. Why does this feel good? Why does this feel bad? Is what I am making this feeling mean true in real reality? If I go against it, what actually happens? This is not a simple process, but learning how to feel to bring awareness back to these feeling parts that have been cut off from us for all of our lives. It's a mess, it's scary, it's complicated for the first while, but eventually you start to learn. You start to understand, okay, what do I actually need? Whoa, yeah, I don't need to participate in these trends. I don't need new clothes. I don't need all this stuff. And we start to, again, the more of us who do this, the more of us are going to see the parts of society and artificial um, insecurity and, and manufactured insecurity and all these things that we literally can absolutely check out of to no detriment to ourselves. We are going to find there are so many things we can quit and be fine. There are so many things we can stop buying and be fine. Stop buying into and be fine. There are going to be times where we're going to realize we need to just rely on each other more, not corporations, right? The corporations really want us on social media having all these fake relationships where we're being fake and everyone's being fake and no one's connected because then who are we dependent on? Them. When we're not in community with each other, 
we are dependent on them. So the more we check out from that, again, we're never going to be completely not dependent on them. As so long as the power structures exist, and again, where are you going to get your water? Where are you going to get your food? Where are you going to get your stuff? We're not all going to be homesteads out in the middle of nowhere. But we can check out more and more and more and more and more. We can buy less. We can do less. And as we do this, if all of us do this, we crash the market. That is what is going to happen. They are going to have to change because there's more of us than there are of them. And that is the bottom line. There are more of us than there are of them. And if we check out to the degree that we all can, and we all can't check out to the same degree, that's why I don't give. This is what you should do. You have to stop buying at McDonald's. You have to do it. That's not available to everybody. But you are going to figure out for yourself what feels good, that is true for me, and gets me a good outcome that I can keep doing even if people are going to reject me. What feels bad, and how can I actually start to stop doing that and heal the trauma and really be there with myself and slowly guide myself through that I'm going to love you anyways and we're going to be okay and do it and feel like you're going to die and then orient and see that you don't and slowly, 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 slowly check out of these things that you thought you had to do to survive, that you thought were the only way, and you slowly check out more and more and more. We consume less and less and less. These corporations fall apart. We become more authentic in our relationships. We rely on each other more. We rely on them less. And then them trying to scare us into hating this group and hating this group and fearing this group and so that they can all be exploited we all of a sudden stand and say, no, that's not okay. They're not another. They are me. They are just like me. And no, this is not okay. And I don't want the shit that, that gets created when you do this. We start to stand up. We will start to reconnect with our humanity and say, this is not okay. And the more of us that do that, we will change the world. So finding your enough is about feeling. Dissociating from your feeling trying to tell yourself you need to be okay with absolutely everything, telling yourself it's all your fault and you can change it. That is the matrix. Spiritual teachers who are telling you to transcend your emotion is the matrix. Again, there are times and places where we need to transcend our emotions for a while because we are so attached to, to, to making meaning out of our emotions that aren't true. We need to, right, I made that video, is it ever useful to stop labeling emotions? Go watch that if you want more on that. But the idea is not to stop feeling. We need feeling. Feeling is the key. But true feeling. So we have to wade through the consensus reality and the, all that stuff to find real feeling. And then you will start to know for yourself, I really don't need that. I don't need to participate in that. I feel stirred up and I'm going to stand up for this thing. I'm going to stand up against this thing. And every single one of us doing that and starting with, I don't feel like shit because I am shit. That is the bottom line. How you find you're enough is you fundamentally question that story that you feel like shit because you are shit. That there's something flawed with you. That's why I say self-love is the key. True self-love. Why do you feel how you feel? Why do you need what you need? Why do you want what you want? Why are you coping, numbing, scapegoating? And what if it's not you being horrible? What if you were trained? What if you were cut off? What if you were indoctrinated and all this stuff? What if you got into that and you started to see yourself clearly? And then from seeing yourself clearly, you started to understand what you actually need to survive and what you don't. What you actually need to thrive and what you don't. And how you can negotiate that in our reality. That is how you find your life. Okay, so that's the end of this talk. I hope that all made sense. You connecting with your feeling and understanding who and what you are is how we find our enough. One step at a time, one day at a time, one moment at a time. And purpose is something you will feel along the way. As you do this, from the moment you start doing this, you will start to feel purpose because purpose is not a thing you end at. Purpose is a thing you live every single one of your days as you're just feeling your path starting from where you are right now. So right here, right now, you can be on purpose just by starting to question your reality that doesn't feel good. That's purpose. You're doing it. That's it. You're on it. You'll feel it. I promise. Okay? So that's that. 
have a fabulous rest of your week and I'll see you next week.